Hello friends. In the previous uh, session, we have seen what is a super mesh and we did a couple of problems dealing with the super mesh. Now in this lecture, we will be seeing some uh, problems which I have handpicked so that we have a good understanding about the application of mesh analysis. So before starting with this problem, clearly you can see that the objective is to find the current Ix. Excuse me. The important definition of mesh analysis you should uh, recollect in this point is that mesh, mesh current is the current which passes along the perimeter of the selected mesh. All right. Now, in this case, let us see if there are some mesh currents which are available. All right. Let us first identify the meshes actually. So this is one mesh. All right. This is another mesh. This is another mesh, and this is another mesh. So when you see this problem, clearly you will have a tendency to directly put uh, the super node, super mesh here because you are having a current source here. But it is not always the case because you need not use it always because the objective is to find Ix. So we will see that we need not use it always. Now let us mark the mesh currents now first. So that is your choice to mark the mesh current. So this is your first mesh current I1 and this is second mesh current I2 and this is the third mesh current I3. All right. So three mesh currents I have selected. You can clearly see the mesh current I2 will flow through the perimeter of the second mesh, which is this one here. So that will flow through the two ohm. Now that is the same current which is asked, which is Ix. Ix is also the mesh current here. Therefore, the first thing which you can note here is that Ix will be equal to I2. Therefore, if you find the mesh current I2, you will be finding the value of Ix. All right. Now, the next thing that you can see is that in the fourth mesh here, you can clearly see that the through the perimeter, it is the 8 ampere which is flowing. All right. 8 ampere. So this is nothing but the mesh current for the this is also the mesh current for the fourth mesh. All right. So the fourth mesh. All right. So let us start uh, proceeding to write the mesh equations. Let us start from this point and I'm going to move in this direction. All right. I'm moving in this direction for the first mesh. So I start with the eight ohm. So I get eight into I1. All right. By this now, by this time, you should understand why we have put plus eight into I1. So in case you are having doubt, you can go to the previous lectures and you can uh, see the uh, steps to write KVL equations. Now, in this four ohm, there are two mesh currents. Therefore, you will have two effects there. So it will be plus four into this current, which is flowing I1 and I2 is opposing. So it is minus I2 and then minus 100 equal to zero. So if I simplify this, <coughs> I will get uh, 12 into I1 minus 4 into I2 equal to 100. So this is my first equation. Now for the second mesh, I can start from this point and I can move in this direction. All right, I'm going to move in this direction. So I'm starting at this point. So initially I will just, I will not take Ix, I will just take I2 itself. So this is the first mesh and this is the second mesh. All right. So I'm writing the KVL here. So it is 2 into I2 because I2 and I move in the same direction plus now it is 3 into this current is I2 and I3 is opposing there. So minus I3. All right. And when I come back here, I see that there is a 4 ohm resistor. So plus 4 and I am moving in this direction. I2 is giving me a positive result. I1 is the against. So minus I1 equal to 0. So if I write it in the proper uh, manner, I will get uh, minus 4 I1 plus 9 I2 minus 3 I3 equal to 0. So this is my second equation. Yeah. Now let us try the third mesh. You have to be very careful when you are writing the third mesh here. All right. So you are starting from this point and let us move in this direction. Okay. We are going to move in this direction. Okay. So when you reach the 10 ohm resistor, all right, when you reach the 10 ohm resistor, you can clearly see there are two currents which are going to be involved. There is going to be the current 8 amperes, which is part of the mesh 4, which is going to flow like this. All right. And then you are having your I3, which is going to flow like this. All right. So clearly what you can see here, unlike the other cases where usually the mesh currents are opposite to each other. In this case, the mesh currents are together with each other. All right. So 
the effect of 8 ampere on 10 ohm will be a positive sign the voltage drop there will be I will put a positive sign so plus 8 into 10 all right then the effect of the I3 is also positive as per sign conventions plus 10 I3 all right I hope you understand this point here then you get plus 5 I3 when you reach here you are having 3 ohm resistor and you are having this I3 current and I2 is opposing so you get the equation like this I hope you have understood this point this is very important if you don't write this properly you are going to make a mistake there all right so if I solve this I will get uh, minus 3 I3 okay and uh, so not sorry I uh, made a mistake here is minus 3 i2 all right and you get uh, 10 15 and 18 so plus 18 i3 equal to minus 80 here in case you forgot to write this 18 to 10 you will get here 0 and you will end up getting a wrong result so what you have to do is you have to take your calculator you have to plug these three equations and you can find the value of i1 i2 and i3 we are interested in the value of i2 and uh, we will be getting it as 4.65 amperes all right i hope you have understood this problem and uh, the concept of this uh, mesh current here the effect of this mesh current all right so otherwise you can also write it like this uh, you can write the 10 into the effect of 8 and the effect of i3 is addition so 8 plus i3 you can write this like this also okay so with that we can finish this problem This is the next problem here. In this problem, you are asked to find the currents here. We, we are asked to find the, basically we are asked to find the mesh currents. So, we can identify the meshes. So, this is one mesh, this is the second mesh and this is the third mesh. Let me write the mesh currents here. So, this is going to be my mesh current I1. Alright. And this is go, going to be my mesh current I2. And this is going to be my mesh current I3. Alright. It's well and good now. So this is 2 volts, I forgot to write that, this is 2 volts here, yeah. Okay, let us start by writing the mesh equations, let us start from this point. So I get the first mesh equation to be 5 into I1 plus 1 into I1, alright. Then I reach here, this is minus 2, minus 6 equal to 0, 6, so 6 volts. So I get here I1 to be equal to 8 by 6. So I1 is directly got with the first mesh itself you don't have to have any much complication so the first mesh so in the second mesh when I put the equation what I get is I have to start from this point and I'm going to move like this so I reach the 12 ohm so I am going to move with the direction of I2 so I get I2 minus I3 minus 15 then here I come so plus 3 I2 plus 2 equal to 0 <coughs> all right so yeah we have got this equation here so writing the third mesh here let us just uh, simplify this and let us put it into a better form so it is 15 into i2 all right minus 12 into i3 plus 0 0.5 equal to 0 all right Oh, I am a bit sorry here. I just made a mistake. This voltage, I was just thinking why I am not getting the value. This is 1.5 volt. Alright. So, here it, you are going to get 1.5. And uh, yeah, that's the only thing here. Yeah, uh, there is no mistake in the first equation. Only the second equation I have written 15 volts instead of 1.5 volt. Alright. So, this is 1.5 volt. Okay. Yeah. Now, before writing the third mesh equation, let us see if we can just find out something directly from here. All right. You can clearly see I3 is the mesh current and so is 0.1 Vx. 0.1 Vx is a dependent current source. All right. So, I3 is the current through the mesh and 0.1 Vx also is the current through the perimeter. So, I3 is equal to 0.1 Vx. Now, what is Vx equal to? Based on this particular polarity and this particular current I1, 
vx will be equal to i1 into 1 and i1 we have already found it to be 8 by 6 into 8 by 6 so vx is equal to 8 by 6 into 1 which is equal to 8 by 6 volt so if i substitute that here i will get if i substitute this value here i get 0 0.1 into 8 by 6 and if i take this and i substitute it here i'll get 15 i2 minus 12 into 0 0.1 multiplied by 8 by 6 plus 0.5 equal to 0. From this I can directly find the value of I2 which will be equal to 73.33 milliamps. Just note the current it is milliamps alright. And if you want to find the value of I3, I3 is nothing but 0 0.1 Vx so it is equal to 0 0.1 into 8 by 6 amps. Alright I hope you have understood the problem and I hope that the concept of mesh analysis is really uh, embedded inside your mind and in the next lecture session we will be starting with various uh, useful techniques for circuit analysis like superposition theorem, maximum power transfer theorem, Thevenin theorem, Norton theorem, Norton theorems etc. and I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Please like, share and subscribe if you enjoy these videos and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.